change in the demeanor of their quarterback, Kirk Cousins, who's known as a pretty even-keeled guy. Cousins has been in this spot once before, two years ago with the Redskins, who had a virtual win and in against the Giants, and Cousins threw two interceptions and a loss. Cousins said this week he remembers the feeling driving home that day, does not want to feel it again. This Vikings offense has been trending upward the past two weeks, with Kevin Stefanski calling the plays. He has Cousins under center more and is using more play action, which plays to Cousins' strengths. A big problem in the Vikings loss to the Bears six weeks ago was turnovers. Cousins threw two interceptions. Dalvin Cook lost the fumble. As tight end Kyle Rudolph said, we can't give them any gifts. The Vikings also can clinch a playoff spot with an Eagles loss to the Redskins. I asked Mike Zimmer what he wants to know, if anything, about the Philly game on Sunday. Zimmer said, nothing. I don't care. I just want to win this game. Back to you, Kay. Thanks so much. You mentioned Stefanski there. The change has been, I mean, real and legitimate over the past couple of weeks with that play action. But taking a look at the Vikings playoff scenario, as Tom did just say, they need a win over the Bears to clinch a wild card playoff fourth. And the Vikings, if they lose and the Eagles beat the Redskins, the Vikings are out. They will miss the postseason. Eagles fans cheering for the Bears. It's pretty wild, guys. Things got pretty real here in week 17. Is Kirk Cousins, guy who's going to be on the Kyle Brandt football experience. You should check that out at 6 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Is he under the most pressure? Yes, 100%. Of all the players in the NFL, and there are 53 men on 32 teams, this guy has the most pressure on his shoulders this entire weekend. And I'll say this. Tom had a great report there, and he mentions that game two years ago against the Giants, a Week 17 game that meant nothing to the Giants, and Cousins threw two interceptions at home, and they did not make the playoffs as the Redskins. Big games like that, where everyone's watching you, that kind of helps define your legacy. You know, Case Keenum won big games for the Vikings. And Case Keenum may never play for a Vikings team ever again, and he'll go down as a Vikings hero because of the Minneapolis miracle. Mm. When Kirk Cousins signed with the Vikings for all that money and with all that fanfare and basically doing a LeBron James decision documentary afterwards, I said it's Super Bowl or bust for the, for the Vikings. So to me, it's not only pressure, it is pressure versus expectations. Mm. It is pressure versus another quarterback in Case Keenum who actually was able to get that job done. And it's pressure against 31 other starting quarterbacks who are looking at Kirk Cousins saying, they're paying him what? I look at Kirk Cousins this, oh, week, yeah. this week and I say, this can define your legacy. You win one big game. Because there also was a playoff game where they were up 11 nothing against the Packers at home a couple years ago and they lost that one. That there also was a Monday night game two years ago where Cam Newton and the Panthers had nothing to play for, came in and beat them and knocked them out of the playoffs also. Like, Cousins in big games, empirical data, has not had his best performances. Your legacy is defined in the biggest of moments. I know Nick Foles can play in big spots because I've seen it. Ooh. Kirk Cousins can talk all he wants, and Mike Zimmer can say that we're focused on You need to do it. So, mm. yes, the pressure is on Kirk Cousins. And I wonder, if he gets this win, and there's a very good chance they do win this game, yeah. will we finally shut up and say Kirk Cousins doesn't win the big games. It, Go get listen, your legacy. If, Go seize it. If he plays really well and against that defense, I think the best defense in all of football, and gets his team into the playoffs, yeah, I think it should stop, be stopped talking about it. I mean, I really... If you get in as a six seed in the I don't this whole card. DNA thing. You know he was perfect against Michigan during his college career. You know he'd be George in the outback. He's been in huge spots. He's yeah. played well in big games. I think if he plays really well this weekend, I think we stop talking about it. If he him. loses, what are we dealing with but all next tough. season? I mean, is this, like, is this something you can never dig out of? Football fans are like a spouse that don't want to be in a relationship. So even if he wins this game, you know what they're going to say. Mm. I'm in the playoffs. you got to win an even bigger one. What you've done for me lately. They're never satisfied. What have you done for me lately? They cannot miss But you're right, though. We, I'm, we're yeah. sitting here talking about how this was their literally paying to go to the Super Bowl. I have Mike Zimmer at the owner meeting sitting next to you saying, Kay, calm down. Yeah. But that's what it was. That's, and now we're here? Crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, for me, you want to talk about pressure. Okay. In the literal sense, figurative sense. Pressure on Marcus Mariota. <laughs> um, his mm. shoulder. Literally, has pressure on his shoulder, the stinger that he's dealing with, the injury. I saw him last week in that game versus Washington. He was 10 for 13 in that first half. He was carving up that defense, running outside the pocket. He was doing everything that I thought that this number one pick would, or the number two overall pick would do. You know, he averaged 5.7 yards a rush. Every time he tucked it away, he was as good as any other running back when he actually took off. That's the image I see. But that is the image you see. And we see him on the ground. We see him on the sideline. We see him walking to the locker room quite a bit. And this is the image that I saw before he was spelled by Dwayne Gabbard. For me, it is about what's going to happen now. Like, he has that pressure, right, in the physical sense. But what about the pressure of, pressure of his future? I mean, he has one more year on his contract. For everything that he's supposed to be for this team, for this franchise, them looking for us saying, is Marcus our guy for that offense? I know this isn't a video game, but he's going to have to be Super Mario. 
And for that defense, they're going to have to dial up pressure on top of pressure on top of pressure on Andrew Luck. So he's going to have to be, for them, Super Mario 2. Mm -hmm. By the way, overrated video game. Super Mario 2 I agree. is the worst video game. How Three, do you baby. From, Three. How do you go from the, 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 the sewers yeah, and, raccoon. and, raccoon? and yep. running through tunnels to to gardening? Talk about it. <laughs> Picking up radishes on top of hills. Uh, whatever. But Three, the wizard. The pressure. The, wizard, the pressure. Great. The pressure is on Marcus Mariota. Oh, okay. bridges in that movie. I, I remember Marcus Mariota also going to Arrowhead Stadium winning a playoff game. And I don't know if you guys yeah. know this, but on this show, we've had um, Prediction Week. Over the summer, we had 90s Rap Week. This is a beat up the Chiefs week. Yeah, Did you know that? Um, Peter has said Bob Sutton about 30 times. It's true. Deservedly so. I've taken my shots. I've done all that. And that's why I think in a weird backwards way, there's a ton of pressure on Pat Mahomes. I look at Pat Mahomes right now. He's this incredible two guard and he's getting 36 a night. He's incredible. And the coach goes up and goes, I think we need 50. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I, I'm giving you all I have to get. You want me to get 50? Yeah, because we got no floor sloppers. We don't protect the rim. We got nobody on the low block. This is this is not week four. This is not week eight. This is week 17, and the Chiefs' defense emergence still has not happened. This Eric Berry, Aragorn reemergence at Helms Deep hasn't happened. I, they're getting sacks. It doesn't matter. I think Patrick Mahomes is under the pressure, A, to not blow it against the Raiders, because, Peter, just give us the people quickly, what is the doomsday scenario for the Chiefs this weekend? If the Chiefs lose to the Raiders uh -huh. and the Chargers beat, Beat the Broncos. The Chargers are the one seed, and the Chiefs are going. Or, or maybe the even the Patriots seed? could be. But the, the Chiefs would be the five seed if that were to happen. It's not good. Because and I, they go on the road, and it's who potentially. Yeah. Baltimore or Pittsburgh. Yeah. Good no, luck. That's terrible. So I look at it as there's that moment at the end of one of the Avengers movies where the Avengers win again, and Thanos goes after the credits. He goes, "Fine, I'll do it myself." I think Pat Mahomes just needs to say, "I'm going to start shooting from the logo. I got to get 50 points because this defense isn't going to show up. That's pressure." Mm. I think mm -mm. it's Nick Foles, guys. Okay. I definitely think it's Nick Foles as far as pressure is concerned because he took over a team last year, a team that when Wentz went down, we buried on the show. We had a funeral for the Philadelphia Eagles. He, out of a storybook, came, won them the Super Bowl, was the Super Bowl MVP, and now he's in the same situation except the difference is, there's a couple, a couple differences, Last time he did that, there were no expectations for Nick Foles. Now he's a Super Bowl MVP. Now he's written a book. Now he's back, and everyone expects him to be the savior. The weight of the world is on his shoulders. If they were one and done under Nick Foles last year, nobody would have batted an eyelash because it was, okay, well, it was Nick Foles. Carson Wentz is gone. Yeah. We lost the season. We think something about him that might not necessarily be appropriate to think about him this year, especially when he inherited a team that was different. He inherited a, a perfect team with everything going the right way. This, I mean, they were one of the best. They were top defense. This year, the 28th defense. The 28th defense you guys are talking about. So I feel like the expectations for Nick Foles, they're a little high. Like this. They have 27 players who were on that Super Bowl team last year. That is a lot of experience, a lot of trust, and a lot of faith. And they've got the one man that I believe in more than any other quarterback in the league right now, and that's Nick Foles. You believe I mean, in Nick Foles more than a, any other quarterback in the league? Just recent history. I, cannot, I mean, every time recent he's in a big history. spot, this guy delivers. Strings, I know you, it's a great story. I want to root for it, but come on. We're doing a throwback to 30 minutes ago. I love that. <laughs> Flashback <laughs> Friday. <laughs> but then, um, Brady. I, thought, you know, I, had, Get into I had to rear that one because his Nick Flair thing went on for five minutes yeah. about yeah. Nick Foles. He's right, truth. It's gold. I'm not Can saying I he say? can't do it. I'm, I'm not saying story, that they though. won't win the Super Bowl, but I'm saying the pressure on him, I think, is greater than any quarterback. Because he had, in my opinion, maybe pressure on himself, but really not that much pressure last year. No. Now it's everyone and You everywhere. know what's funny, Kay? I, I have, it's so crazy. I have zero. Zero doubt, and maybe I should. That he's going to play amazing. Yeah, because you want to. I agree. A zero doubt. Like there's no chance Nick Foles falls on his face. Of course he can, but like in my head, this guy is better than Brady right now. He's better than Mahomes right now, and I would not want to see him in the playoffs. But you're right. Let's yeah. be realistic. It's still Nick Foles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. Nick Foles, it's that the team isn't the same. If this was last year's team and everything was the same and they were killing it all season, and he came in and led them all the way, it'd be different to me than what the team has looked like for the majority of the season in that secondary. Mm. It just, mm. it's just... There's like a lot of like Santa Claus like analogies and there's like, I believe, yeah, or, like, I don't like, care what you say, like, or, I believe. Or Jesus, I mean, there's just all kinds of things. <laughs> that light last night in New York was him reconnecting with his <laughs> That was Nick Foles. They've come back to get him. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry. He was like T'Challa, right? <laughs> yes! Um, I will say this. The reason why there's no pressure on Nick Foles is because outside of Brady, he's the only quarterback, if he gets into the postseason, playing with house money. Every other quarterback, Drew Brees has to win another one. Big Ben, what is your team doing? Jared Goffney's redemption. Every other quarterback. Those guys don't have statues. Is, <laughs> you know, they don't have statues. He's playing. He's not under pressure. 
He's, no, he has, he's under pressure. I'm just saying he's not going to feel the pressure in the game. I believe, I believe Schrager. Like, he's playing with house money. Mm. He just came off a Super Bowl. He's already come. Okay. He's going <laughs> to get paid. Come. He's going to get paid regardless. I think we're putting a lot of pressure on Nick Foles. I don't, I don't know how you could possibly argue me on that. You don't think you're putting pressure on Foles? He doesn't feel my pressure. I'm just a dude talking about football <laughs> on a that. show. Let's welcome in Ian Rappaport. We're waiting to see Rap Sheet. Thanks for joining the show. Some big names will be ready to go on Sunday for a full slate of action. 16 games.